first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, a pound of smoked sausage. This is the pre-done stuff, although you could use leftover brats in this recipe too. Sometimes you throw too many brats on the grill. I always do that. You know, you got to have a couple extra. So what do you do with the leftover brats? They would work wonderfully in this chowder. So I've got just, you know, either one of the round links. You could even do two of the round links if you want lots of sausage. Um, but these happen to be already in, in just, you know, big links. And I'm just going to kind of, you can slice them up, you can quarter them up. It's up to you how you want to do this. But I'm just going to chop them up and get a, a little bit of color on them. Brown them up just for a minute or two. And that's just going to give this stew a little bit more flavor. This is one of those steps you don't have to do. If you are in a real hurry and you don't want to brown your sausage, that's okay. It's still going to be wonderful no matter what. I love smoked sausage. And I love the idea of taking to the tailgate just a big slow cooker full of, or, you know, one of those Nesco roasters full of uh, the chowder, and you don't have to hassle with the grill if you don't want to. But most of all, you know, I do this at home, something like this at home on game day, because it keeps me out of the kitchen and hanging with everybody, including the family, and then I don't have to miss any of the action. So I just want to get the sausage into a skillet and just get it browned up just for a minute or so. Just a little bit of color. Just gives it so much more flavor, I think. I've talked about that a lot. Um, when you are cooking in the slow cooker, now not all recipes. Some recipes you don't need to um, because they've got enough flavor. But some recipes uh, just, you know, bumps it up a notch if you can brown, brown things up just a little bit and then get them in the slow cooker. This is just, I mean, it doesn't get much easier than this recipe. It's one of those dump recipes. Open some cans, um, dump it all in there. Uh, add a bunch of cheese and you are golden. You can't mess this one up either. Um, so it, it's really one of those great recipes where it's a no-brainer. Anybody can do it. And I'm always looking for new and different recipes all the time, you guys. So keep them coming, especially if you've got a great game day recipe. Actually, we had the guy here who um, is a viewer and a fabulous at-home cook. And he's going to be cooking with me in just a little bit. He's got a couple of great game day recipes that he makes on game day and he's going to make them for you too. I think those you at home cooks, you're in the trenches like me, you know what's going on. You got to go it on. You you're some of the best cooks for sure. So good. It smells amazing. All right. I'm going to just start opening up my cans. The recipe calls for 2 cans of cream of celery soup. Cream of celery is what we're using here. And then we've got one can of French style green beans. I know it sounds a little odd. It really works in here. It's just yummy. I am going to drain that a little bit. I'll never forget the first time I went to Lambeau Field and saw all those tailgaters. I was like, are you kidding me? It's like the coolest thing ever. In fact, I recently had a friend who I hadn't seen in years and years um, come to town and we went for dinner and I took her by the stadium and she's like, it's so cool. It's like, you know, and everyone who says that, you bring them from out of town, it's like the stadium's like right, you know, there are houses next door and neighborhoods. And I go, yeah. And let me tell you, you should see it here on game day. So cool. I brought my, my nephew's a huge Packers fan, and they live in Arizona. So he and his grandfather came to see a game last year. Maybe it was the year before. Anyway, it was his first ever Packers game, but they could not get over the way we tailgate. I mean, people really from out of town don't get it, how much you know we're into it. And they had the best time ever, ever. almost froze to death. And it was October. <laughs> it wasn't that cold at all. And I was like, my nephew Carter, I'm like, dude, this is, this is October. Don't ever come in winter. So funny, he borrowed all everything that my husband Bob had warm. I think Carter wore. He was just so cold. And then totally during halftime, he like went to into Curly's to warm up. Couldn't hack it. 
just so funny. All right, so my sausage has a little bit of color, and again, which means a little bit of flavor. This is just one pound of smoked sausage. Smelling really good. Yum. I remember when I had my first brat. I called it a brat. And uh, I wasn't so sure about it. And now, man, I'm hooked. I am hooked. Okay, so in goes my sausage into the slow cooker. A lot of you guys have emailed me about these liners, these slow cooker liners, and I have used them before. And they really rock as far as fast cleanup goes, especially if you're headed to the stadium and you just need a quick cleanup. Um, they are fabulous. All right. Deb, thank you very much. Okay, hot pan there. Okay, let's start dumping and adding and all that kind of good stuff. All right, as I said, two cans that I opened of cream of celery soup. Love my new long spatula. Get every little bit of the soup out of there. Here we go. One and two. My slow cooker has become my best friend as of late. Um, you know, we're all just so crazy busy, and sometimes it's just how am I? How in the world am I going to get dinner on the table? Well, my slow cooker to the rescue. There we go, in there. Now we've got our green beans. This is just one 15 ounce can, again, of drained French style green beans. Now it's chowder, so every chowder I've ever met, that's why they call it chowder, has some potatoes in it. Um, I am really gonna cheat on this one, and you can too. Uh, my new, besides my slow cooker, my new way to um, have potatoes and casseroles and, and in soups and things like that, certainly, if you have the time, go ahead um, and, you know, peel and dice up some, and, and cook, actually, uh, some potatoes. Um, you know, go for it. But I don't have the time most days. So look at this. This is just a bag of frozen, I like to use in this recipe, the cube-style hash brown potatoes. A lot of times they call it the southern-style hash brown potatoes, not the shredded. So I keep uh, a bag of frozen hash browns in your in your freezer and anytime you know um, you've got you know a recipe with chopped diced potatoes in it a few cups of this and you're golden you know for pot pies and you know I could go on and on where you just need a couple or two of potatoes and you you need them quick these are great and then for this recipe you can use either the plain southern style potatoes or I thought why not add a little flavor and so I've got the O'Brien um, frozen potatoes. Just let them thaw a little bit, just, you know, five, ten minutes out of the freezer. And these actually have a little bit of onion in there and some um, green pepper and some red pepper. So it just adds a little bit more flavor to this chowder. But if, if you don't do the onion and pepper and don't like that or the kids don't like that, just use the plain. And the recipe calls for three to four cups of the frozen hash browns. Or, you know, three to four cups of... Uh, I would not definitely cook the potatoes um, at least to the halfway point. Don't throw them in there raw. Now I've got a tablespoon of dried onion. And I start out with three cups of milk in this recipe. And then, you know, if it, it, it tends to get thick as it cooks, then you can add another cup, cup and a half, um, you know, before you serve it. So we're going to do about three cups now. We can always add that fourth cup later. And it's a cheesy sausage chowder, so I need one more ingredient. And that's going to be one pound of cubed processed cheese. This is the kind that comes in the box, and you just dice it up into, you know, little chunks like we have here, and that way it's going to melt. Now, you notice the cheese goes in last. If we were to put the cheese in first, it would stick to the bottom and be a big mess, and it would be awful. So that's really probably one of the most important things of this recipe is that the cheese goes in last and on top. So just get that in here.
Now, I think that this is one of those recipes that cooks best. Um, this is not going to be like an all-day thing, like we're cooking a roast. Uh, this is just, you know, a couple of hours. I like to do it on low because I think that cheese melts a little bit nicer. Um, on, on high, it, it, it could burn. So we're talking a couple of hours on low, cover on, and just wait and see because you're going to be happy. Come with me. Here we are. This is a big batch of love and goodness and easy. I mean, this is seriously one of those recipes where um, you totally are looking like a rock star. So look at this. I mean, thick and creamy and rich and wonderful with that smoked sausage in there and all that cheese and those potatoes and the, the green beans just really work in this recipe. I know you, you, you didn't think that they'd work, but they really do. Look at that, man. And on a cold day where you just need to warm up all over, I mean, not this is just not a game day recipe. This is like an any time you're, you know, wanting a, a big bowl of love, this is it. Okay. <laughs> Great weeknight dinner, really is. Might want to double the batch on this one if you have big enough uh, slow cooker or big Nesco because this is going to get gobbled up. This would have warmed my nephew Carter up at the game. Oh yeah, it would have. One more sausage in there. Ooh. Okay, now, what are you going to serve this with? You know, it's really fun, I think, to do some fixins when you're serving, you know, chili, of course, or, or soups or stews. You know, just makes the whole game day experience just a little more fun. You know, a little buffet, you can throw what you want on top. Uh, so what am I going to throw on top of this one? Well, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, diced scallion, if you want, or parsley would be great, just to kind of have something fun on the top. Dice some of those up. And then what about a little more shredded cheddar cheese, huh? How about a little bit of that? So there you go. It's my cheesy sausage chowder. You do it all in the slow cooker.